Wayne Finch here, uh, doing a little song and dance about uh, getting the best out of your computer system and graphic systems to maximize frame rate for capturing in Second Life. And I started with a note card and it got really complicated. And this is so much easier and fun. <laughs> so, hey, let's start at the beginning. So basically, you need to have... If you're in the in the uh, compartment that uh, shopping for a motherboard CPU, one of the most important things you need to know about Second Life is that it is a sec uh, a single thread program, so it does not take advantage of multi-core processing. Second thing, it is built on the OpenGL graphics platform. So, you know, so there's your motherboard, there's your CPU, and there's your video card. The third thing is, it is very memory intensive. So what you need to do is go to your motherboard specs, find the memory slot, and pick the fastest speeds that you can afford and get as much RAM as you can possibly get. So in my case, um, here we go. Memory, I picked up uh, 32 gigs, and uh, you know this was the best bang for the buck I can get at the time. I couldn't find anything faster, and it's been wonderful. The other thing is your video. You want lots of memory as well. Mine has 30, also 32 gigs on here, so that's great. So I have lots of memory, and fast memory. So you know that's great. So that that's the start. The other thing that you need to do is bring up my video console. Here we go. Make sure everybody can see it. So when you go to your video card properties, I have NVIDIA, but ATI has the same thing. One of the places you want to go is you go to the manage your 3D settings. Not on the global settings. Go to program settings. Mine is already set up, but go find Firestorm, and this is the first place you want to start off with. There's a lot of stuff in here, and as you go to each one, you'll see the description on the bottom down here telling you, explaining what each part is. But the two big ones that you want to do is, again, open GL rendering. I want to see I want my motherboard to do it because the auto select sometimes it'll bounce between program and video card so I just like hey just do the video card power management yeah I'm a hog so I jacked that up thread optimization well it's a single process thing so turn that off and then the other thing I did is up here maximum frame rate why go above 60 so you know why waste resources to get 120 frames when 60 is all I really need to get really good video. So there's this, there's one really big area you're going to save a lot of stuff on. So now we go over to Viewer. And this is the other one, and it's fairly easy. Um, I have my stats here. I'm in a really heavy, laggy area. Uh, well, not laggy. It's just texture-rich. It's just... <laughs> This is such of a fun place to test on. And that's what you need, is you need a good place to play. Um, so right now I'm bucking up at around 30 frames a second. You can see I'm halfway between high and ultra. And so let's go right over to ultra. And see what we get. And that's fine. And I just already... Pfft. Let's all jack these over. So you're going to see my frame rate drop is going down 20, below, below 20. So the, the big stealer, sun and moon projections, shadows. All right, like I'm already tanking down below 10 here. As soon as I turn that off, whoop, it's going to go right up to 20 again. 25, you know, that is the killer, shadows. Yeah, so here we go, 24, 25. So if you can limit... Oh, and then your draw distance is the other big killer. If you can have a really tight, closed-in environment... Boom. I'm getting some good frame rates. Now I can maybe look at sun and moon only. 
sun and moon and projectors really start making it complicated for a CPU to process everything that it needs to process. So if you can control your environment in a nice tight environment, shadows are great. But like you say, fantasy fair places like that where you have no control and you need to be able to get some distance in your views. You know, it's starting to get there. Sometimes I turn off ambient inclusion because there's very little difference. It, it's so subtle, but hey, it gets me another three, four frames. I'll do it. So that is, in a nutshell, how I got through Fantasy Fair. Now, the other one is on the hardware tab. Here is Anthropomorphic, uh, whatever that is. Um, one of the things on your graphic card settings for the 3D application is stuff in there for that as well. So, you know, the rest of these, I just left them on. And then down here in the memory is the other area I played. I jacked these all over because I have a lot of RAM and I have a lot of video memory. And so I just let that thing load up. So when I get to a place like this, that is huge, heavy environment, heavy, heavy, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, distance, uh, EAPS, that's it, EPP environments. It's pretty rich. So my frames are going to really start tanking out. So then that's when I start th changing my, uh, my view so that I'm not catching infinity. As soon as I stop catching infinity my frames climb up as soon as I get infinity on the horizon my frames will start dropping down so if you have a big environment to film and capture try not to get too much horizon too much infinity and you'll you'll do pretty good so that's everything that I figured out in the last oh, three months playing around so hope all of this helps you a wee bit have a great day out there play lots capture have fun be creative